I'm Mark Ritchie. This is Real Visionaries. I'm Mark Ritchie II, manager of RTM3, which is a private friends and family asset pool. I'm also an analyst and coach from Intervini Private Access, where we coach traders on everything they're gonna need to be successful in trading from A to Z. I am currently here at the Ritchie family homestead or sort of the house that trading built where I actually grew up and now live uh, and learned all manners of uh, things about trading and speculation from my dad, who I'm also gonna be talking about in this upcoming series. This particular series I'm really excited about because I am going to be talking and speaking with people that I have an immense amount of respect for, most of which are both friends and mentors of mine. And the collective amount of experience is probably over 100 years. Uh, each of these people have also taken a non-traditional path uh, to markets and success, similar to myself. And they're also just interesting characters, not in terms of just their story, but I think there's an entertainment quality that I hope people will really appreciate. And not to mention, there are gonna be some incredible pearls of wisdom that I think people can revisit uh, repeated times uh, as we go through. So the first person I'm gonna be speaking with is Mark Minervini, who I've mentioned on the platform before in my own masterclass interview that I credit with a lot of some of my own success in terms of breakthroughs uh, he's been a, both a coach and mentor and friend of mine. We're going to be sitting down with Jared Dillian together for sort of a roundtable discussion on all things risk, opportunities in the market, how we view certain things. It's a great discussion. I think people get a lot out of it. This is a market where it's just you know grinding you to death <laughs> and slowly. Um, but beneath the surface, and this is something that I've been... I, don't, I hate to use the word prediction because I don't like to give predictions, but something that I expected that would unfold. Um, I talked about a, gener a generation of investors having the biggest losses and uh, getting set, those, that generation getting set up for uh, these big losses by getting conditioned that you had this low volatility and every time the market came in, every time stocks came in, these big cap fang stocks, they'd just come back. That happened in the 90s too. Um, and then of course, the the, the uh, proverbial crap hit the fan. Mark is a incredibly unique mind and story in terms of the way he thinks about things. And he's also an incredible coach as well as an incredible trader, which is a really unique combination. I'm also gonna be talking with Peter Brandt. Peter is somebody I refer to as Yoda when it comes to risk management and statistics and really taking a deeper dive uh, into understanding probability theory in practice. I'm also going to be picking his brain on how in the world an old school guy like him got into crypto, his current views on the crypto market and Bitcoin versus other things and how that even plays into risk. When we think about Bitcoin as an asset, right, it's, it's a computerized asset. It's, you know, it's computerized gold to some degree. You know, it's not a company that produces a product that has a revenue flow that earns money. It's, a, you know, it's, it's an unperforming asset to some degree, right? Now that gets you into the whole NFT and can you earn money on these things? And I, I, you know, I have my own opinion, which is not super enthusiastic about that stuff. But Bitcoin, at least to this point, has been unhackable. Bitcoin is 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 has an immediate. We can place an immediate value on it. It's transferable. Can be moved quickly. We're not going to produce more, and so it has. It it it's accepted. It's an accepted asset. And so it has a lot, of, a lot of characteristics of something that can be a store of value. I'm also going to be speaking with Tony Saliba. Tony Saliba is one of the OGs of Chicago floor trading, specifically in the area of options. Cut his teeth in markets uh, almost 45 years ago. Uh, that were nascent at the time and talking through his evolution of going from a loser to a winner and then how he has transitioned that into many different areas. So the lesson is, you know, to be disciplined, okay, but real discipline because it's easy to say I'm disciplined, but, you know, you got to walk that line, particularly you got to know your risk, uh, you know, you know what you can afford to risk. And I'm a I've been a big fan of a lot of, uh, of a number of very basic and still you know, uh, old fashioned, but useful concepts. And that is sounding boards. 
I solicit uh, opinions of others and weigh them. And I might debate it or, or, you know, quickly say, sorry, that's out of my lane. But um, uh, I've always advocated for, you know, I, I trained a lot of traders and I had um, all my clerks trade and I advocated um, uh, a consensus and a sounding board and different ideas. Like, what do you, where do you think vol is going to go? What do you, you know, because analysis goes so far. So, um, and homework, homework is huge. Uh, to, to go to bed at night, understanding what you could expect the next morning, you're so much more prepared uh, for the, the next day. And lastly, I'm gonna be doing another interview with my father, sort of a part two of the whirlwind interview we did a few years ago on Real Vision. And in particular, I wanna talk to him about some of the lessons he learned from the 70s, because that was the market where he really cut his teeth. And there are a lot of interesting um, ways to compare and contrast the current environment to that environment different uh, ideas around volatility, inflation, and then coming back to risk management and how to stay in business and alive regardless of the different regime. Do you think anybody in Washington knows how much debt the, the, this government can uh, deal with? I'm and not gonna answer that because yeah, I think no, everybody no, it's of course, rhetorical. Of course you're not, yeah, it's a, rhetor it's a rhetorical question. Uh, it's a rhetorical question. So you ask the question, how bad can things get? You know, I was in the pit when somebody came along and told me that the uh, Federal Reserve had just raised the interest rate from 22 to 24 percent. One shot. That's the, right. This is the advantage right. of this. Speaking of it being old, I, there, nobody in this room can remember that. I promise you that. Well, that's for sure. Uh, can things get worse? Oh, my gosh. Each one of these people deserves probably twice as much time as I even gave them in the conversation. But again, I think there's just going to be an incredible amount of lessons and really great insights into what's made each of them successful. I'm really excited about this series, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did sitting down with each one of these guests.